Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love Island USA, Season 6, Episode 18. Y'all already know what to do. We got a lot to get through. Blair, you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. We start with Leah and Miguel. Miguel didn't expect to make close friends here. Mm -hmm. Leah is feeling bad that Connor's gone, Mm -hmm. but things just were not there with them. Okay. He compliments her, talking about that he thinks she's beautiful and everything that's great about her. And he actually does like her a lot. They Mm. are excited to sleep in bed together and they immediately start making out oh my goodness leah loves that miguel isn't crazy serious like connor was um because that could scare her off listen here god help us off with these two please <laughs> listen i don't know what miguel see but listen this is the same path that connor connor chose a path of destruction yeah and miguel i don't know how soon or if you are ready to choose that path because even though you are basically checking your list and basically going down it twice and stuff like that I don't know if you want to be hand in hand with Leah. You get yeah. what I'm saying? What What do you think about this scene? Um, I was just thinking that they're a good match. I think oh that they're goodness. both here for fun. And they're both, both of their heads are probably going to turn mm-hmm. in Casa. So I don't think Miguel is going to have the same reaction as Connor because Connor was really trying to build something with yeah. this girl. Miguel is here for a good time in a long time. And, so. and to your point, I do feel like Leah has that sense. Yeah. I do feel like she has that sense that like, you know what? I like Miguel. He's attractive. Um, the sexual uh, 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 tension is there. Right. But at the end of the day, I can't bring you home to mama. Yeah. And I, mean? I think she's cool with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we go to Janae and Kenny. Yeah. yeah. Janae thinks Connor was a sweet person, but she's happy to be sharing a bed with Kenny. Mm-hmm. He shows Janae his sleeping positions and they joke about that a little bit. Yeah. He tells her that he hasn't been in bed with anyone in four months. Mm-hmm. His body count is 40 something, which she thought was pretty good for his age. And he tells us that he had a girlfriend in high school, but was sex driven in high school just like a puppy just looking everywhere chasing all the bones Mm -hmm. he currently is not driven by sex anymore which he says is uh attributed to him being more mature that's true janae is grateful that kenny is there and she is feeling some good vibes from him listen here if i listen to janae my man is the funniest man ever in the world yeah because man you see the back of her throat every time he talks Mm -hmm. you see all the back of her teeth and everything because she is feeling uh what is my man name kenny kenny right Mm -hmm. listen here man you know we are rooting for janae at least i am right i am but the more i see janae the more i see a fake person Uh, and 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 and, and look man i know i know listen here she's my family mm -hmm. okay let me deal with my cousin okay okay (laughs) i know she's fake okay i know she's playing the game i sure was listening to some reviews off of uh after sun and they say out of everybody in the house janae is the one that plays the game and everybody knows she's playing the game right basically i'm paraphrasing in a way Mm -hmm. to where it's like oh janae may actually be on the oh i know who to be friends with i know who to be close with Mm -hmm. i know how to keep basically you interested and basically be on my side to vote for me so you know janae keep doing what you're doing but every time i see a scene with you and a new guy it's always like you know he's the most funniest guy he's the most interesting guy he is like the guy for you Mm-hmm. It, it's just hard to watch sometimes. Yeah, but I think we sh- we also got to bring into the conversation that a lot of the time with these shows, the black girls just do not get the play that, that they is deserve. True. And I don't fault her for playing a game or trying to spark up interest with people that maybe she wouldn't initially have a spark with. You're right. Because who's to say that the next person coming will even be there for her or would be interested in her? You're right. So I'm just like, she she kind of got to get it where she live in a way. Yeah, so. ma- maybe I'm sexist. <laughs> <laughs> maybe when I see a woman playing a game to a T, yeah. it makes me feel some type of way. It's just, it, it just sometimes it's cringy to watch. Sometimes. It's just not genuine. Yeah, it's yeah. just not genuine. But, but guess what? You know, I'm still... Yeah, honestly, my perspective, and you could be 100% right, I think that she's just happy to be in a couple and to be chosen Mm -hmm. because Kenny does not seem that interested. He is not trying that hard. And I think that his head will be turned. And that's my problem. She always finds herself in situations to where she's trying the hardest. And I just think it's the nature of the game and the landscape, you know? That's true, that's true. So so we go to Rob and Cassidy. Mm -hmm. They are at the dock, and he's asking her, why did you pick me? Mm -hmm. And she says, just stuff that you've told about me, like I like about your background. Mm -hmm. They talk about about skydiving bungee jumping even though she's not really into possibly bungee jumping he ain't either yeah rob says me connor and aaron plan on going to vietnam and maybe you can come well i guess we'll see depending on how this works out <laughs> listen here man rob like it or not rob has this charm to make you want to try harder to crack his shell yeah to crack that cold because 
And, and and the thing about it is you want to believe that in this safe there's something valuable in it but usually there's nothing this is rob this is who he is the more you get him to talk the more you get him to show his personality and i think she's like i, I think we gonna see later on she's like at first i didn't get you but now i'm starting to get you and i'm starting to like you and i think she thinks that the more that she gets to learn rob that it's going to be like some magical thing that's in the safe no this is this is rob yeah i think rob is kind of a you get what you see type yes, of person yes yeah. yes 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 yeah. uh nicole and kendall chat they both are sad that Connor's gone. Facts. After her last talk with Miguel, though, she didn't know if his intentions were genuine. So she started to pull away from him and was gravitated more towards Kendall. Kendall mm. says that he could sense that as well. So she is saying that Kendall gives her this level of comfort that just nobody else in the villa has given her. What is your thoughts on that while they was making out? Um, My thoughts on that... I think Nicole chose the safe choice, which mm -hmm. was Kendall, who was showing more interest and in mm -hmm. actually like trying hard and making her avocado toast and different things like that. Yeah. Like Miguel was not going out of his way for that girl. No, he would kiss and make out with her and tell her sweet nothings. But Kendall was actually showing that he had a real interest in her. Something so. did make me feel some type of way. This is later on in this uh, episode to where she's in the makeup room and she's looking out the window. And she's like, Kendall didn't make my coffee. Yeah, Kendall. I'm the. I, I just didn't like how that sound. It sounded like an expectation. It, 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 it sounded crazy. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. It sounded mm -hmm. crazy. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, like. My whole point is, um, there's a lot of things that my wife do for me, and there's never a time where the things that she does, I'm like, where is so and so, or where's A and B? Because you always want to be in the attitude of appreciation, right? right? Mm -hmm. So I don't expect it. And because I don't expect it, I appreciate it more. Yeah, so with her, time. with her, I feel like she's expecting it. And it's kind of like, come on, you're late. Where yeah, are you? Yeah. And I'm just like. That doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's move on. So we move on to Nigel and Liv. Yeah. Nigel, y'all. We doing good with time, by the way. I'm just letting y'all know that. <laughs> Nigel feels that Liv is regretting her decision. He just feels weird, like mm. weird energy coming from her with this situation. Mm, okay. Liv is explaining to him that she sent home a friend and it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Nigel doesn't want her to feel like she made the wrong decision and mm -hmm. he's getting that sense from her body language. Liv says that she had to do something and she did what she thought was best. Yeah. She's not all over Nigel and she's like maybe that's what you're talking about um, and Nigel's like no it's just that I'm not feeling the best about the situation Yeah, Nigel doesn't take lightly that they're a couple and Liv is again telling him it was a hard decision mm -hmm. Liv feels that he's nitpicking the situation yeah. and she tells him that she's not gonna put on a face and act like everything's okay when her friend is going home mm -hmm. so she ends up walking off and then he's like well can we end it with a hug let's end it with a hug and she's just like I'm not affectionate Oh my goodness. <laughs> Blair, can I ask you a question before I ask you what is your thoughts on this? Yes. How long if you had to predict, how long was was uh was it in Nigel? Yeah. How long was he in that villa? Was it even twenty four hours? Was it even seventy two hours? Mm -hmm. So 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 based with with that in mind, with yeah. him there for that short period of time, definitely compared to the OG people, what is your thoughts on this scene? I thought Nigel was being ridiculous. Mm hmm Like Number one, you got chosen, you're safe. Be happy about that. Preach to us. I understand that Liv was crying and she didn't make it sound like, oh, Nigel is great and I really want to get to know this person. But that's because there was a tough decision at hand. She's, exactly. she's sending home somebody that she got to know and spend time with. Exactly. So I was just like, Nigel is really like not handling this well mm -hmm. and it's actually giving me the ick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was just like, Nigel, uh, whenever it's time for you to go, I hope you pack your bags quickly because you're doing a lot right now. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. The funny thing about Nigel, when 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 we first saw him as a bombshell, or at least when I saw him as a bombshell, I was like, finally, a brother. Mm -hmm. And then I heard him talk, and I was like, you know, just let's put that down. Okay. Because he is not my brother from another mother. Okay. Because he's weird, and I don't like weird people. Mm. Weird people, like, how do you just come into the villa? You don't know anybody except for the guy you just came in with, really. Right. Right. And you mad at her or you felt like it was disrespectful that she chose you and didn't get the reaction that you was kind of hoping for. What's the reaction you was hoping for? He thought she was going to be like, Nigel, I'm so excited to get to know him. Da, da, da. Like, no, nobody knows you. No. Nobody knows you. Nigel is self-absorbed. Yeah. Right? He only cares about himself. He don't care about the fact. Mind you, 
he was the only guy that didn't touch the shorts when they was going through the door. Uh, when when they hung Connor shorts, well, I, I don't fault him for well, that. Well, I fault him now. <laughs> I fault him now. I'm, I'm nitpicking at him okay. because because it, it it just lets you know like you chose the there's no possible girl on that villa to do this to that couldn't have been a more worse person to do this with. Okay. And Liv, the fact that you did this with Liv, the fact that everyone is connected to this girl, not only are you ruining your romantic side of, the, of Love Island, you are actually ruining the friendship vibe of it too. People are not going to defend you. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So Liv goes to talk to Kayla and Nicole because she course. needs to talk to somebody about of course. this. She explains to them what Nigel was saying and Kayla is like, but this isn't about him. Mm. Which it absolutely wasn't. Nigel is talking to Cordell. Nigel Nigel feels that it's his fault in a way that Connor left and he doesn't want the girls to be cold to um well he doesn't want what's her name Liv to be cold to him like he felt mm-hmm. like her body language was cold okay so Rob ends up going over to the girls and he tells Liv that she didn't do anything wrong mm-hmm. Rob says if you came in here and acted how you act now things might have been different oh okay a little flirty he's basically like listen I like what I see <laughs> And Cordell is explaining to Nigel, which I'm glad there was somebody there to break it down to him because he was not seeing the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. Cordell said she had to pick someone, but she is here to find love Mm -hmm. and she wants to find it with you. If she didn't want to, she would have chose Connor for a friendship coupling and just waited for another bombshell. So basically, don't ruin your opportunity here. Oh, no, you already ruined it for me, buddy. Yeah, he kind of did. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, like you even going over there talking to to Cordell, you're trying to make something that have nothing to do with you about you. Yeah, that's like you going to the villa and saying, "Look, guys, I know y'all mad at me," and everybody's like, "What are you talking?" Like, I don't even know your name. Mm-hmm. Like, you get what I'm saying? I'm, the whole time I'm calling him Miguel. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> His name is Nigel. Uh-huh. So Nigel have the self absorb I don't know if it's a cold switching thing. I'm not even saying it because he's black. I'm not even saying it because he's um, talking weird. But he just has a weird aura. That is oozing off of him that I'm feeling even from my house. You okay. get what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Like, 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 it's just something weird about him that it's just like the fact that you even think that this was cool to like say mm-hmm. is weird. You get what I'm saying? You yeah, don't even, I'm you, like that's something that you think and kind of work out yeah, internally, exactly, because like, it really wasn't about you. No, 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 it no, wasn't. No, it wasn't. Weird. So as they're getting ready for bedtime, Nigel is talking about it some more. Yeah. He's thankful he's here, but he's in an uncomfortable position. Everybody's probably like, "You're here." Yeah. What is there to talk about? Connor's gone. You're here. Like, get comfortable. Mm-hmm. Leah is putting on a little bit of makeup before she goes to bed so she can look good for Miguel. Mm-hmm. So the next day, Nicole look is looking out the window. This is the part we talked about, yeah. y'all. And she's like, Kendall isn't making my coffee? And then she's like, oh, yeah, there he is. And he brings her coffee and breakfast. That's nasty work to me. And that sounds like... Um, uh, it just sounds like an expectation and in a way it kind of feels like you're kind of being like treating Kendall like a dog in a way of just like come here right now do this right now and I'm just like I don't know if it's going to get worse from here mm-hmm. but just seeing that I'm just like I hope she reigns that in no it's nasty work because it kind of brought me back to Cordell when he was when when Serena uh, basically wasn't liking him and didn't tell him yet the first time right yeah um, he was bringing the avocado toast and wanted to do more for her mm. and, and and it's not even that she wasn't appreciative she was more like <sighs> you yeah. know what I'm saying so it's like it just brought me back to that feeling because mm-hmm. I know it's like a tradition that like you usually make iced coffee or something like that for the people that you're with but even Hakeem going back to episodes ago was talking to Liv about hey why don't you make me something why don't you do something and Liv went downstairs the next day and made him a big breakfast Yeah. so I'm like the, it, it just comes off as weird, especially with everything that we know about Nicole and Miguel and things like that. And basically, the reason why she chose Kendall, in my opinion, is because the Miguel thing fell through. Right. You get what I'm saying? And Liv was upset last night just about the com- uh, confrontation with Nigel. Yeah. And, and she feels like she's not feeling anything romantic. And then Janae says, yet. Not yet. And I'm just like, okay, Janae. Like, I get you want everybody to have their uh, have their head in the game or whatever. So, Listen, yeah. <laughs> whenever I feel something towards Janae, I'm just going to battle it and attack it with love, okay? Okay. I got love for you, my sister, okay? Cassidy says that she cuddled with Rob just a little bit. Okay. 
So Nigel ends up pulling Liv for a chat. After thinking about everything, he thinks he was being selfish. Mm -hmm. He was concerned about himself and not what Liv had to do. Yeah. He does apologize, and Liv validates his feelings during the conversation. Yeah. Serena and Cordell, they're watching and making jokes about what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Liv says that, you know, these are our friends. We've been here for a while. It's just hurtful when one of us has to go. Yeah. She didn't intend to make him feel like a second choice. Liv does feel like something is missing with Nigel and the conversation just is not there for her. Mm -hmm. Well, not. And she asked him, well, what is your plan like today moving forward? And he says, his plan is I'm going to talk to you to see if something is here, I guess. Mm. And I'm just like, that does not sound very appetizing. He's just weird. <laughs> to see if something is here, I guess. He's, he just, okay. he's just a weirdo. And it's like, it's hard. Well, it's easy to put into words. But um, it's the fact that he pulled Liv to the side and he basically made it seem like, you know, let's talk, let's talk. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, let's have this talk. And even though you apologize, like, apologize for your aura. Yeah. Apologize for your weird aura. Because, yes, you said what you said, which is weird. But that still don't take away, like, what I feel. Mm -hmm. And I think overall, when we was watching it, you basically were saying, like, I think Liv feels that he's a weirdo. Yeah. And in some ways, Liv is a weirdo. Mm -hmm. But she's like, you're on a different level to where, like, if it's easy to make this type of mistake, oh, I can make this mistake again without actually making a mistake. Yeah. Like, by actually doing something that has nothing to do with you, and you come in and say, well, this made me feel bad. And I'm like, why would I want to invest in that? You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's true. And I also feel like just with his statement of getting to know her i'm just like i think self-absorbed is probably like the best way yeah, to put it because even given this opportunity to start fresh and new like he wasn't trying to ask her any questions he wasn't trying to make her laugh or make it a good situation for them to continue on getting to know each other like he made it just seem like well i guess we're here so what are we gonna do i'm just like nigel bye nigel should have been <laughs> my thing is nigel should have been up there with breakfast like you know what i'm sorry yes you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. so leah and miguel talk yeah yeah they both like scary movies okay the more she talks to him she finds that she likes him and she also likes that he is touchy-feely even though she said i'm not a touchy person yeah okay well leah jokes that she likes the new guys more than him mm -hmm. miguel says that leah is the only one in the villa he wants to get to know oh, okay for now <laughs> Uh, we fill in the Leah and Miguel era. I'm not, but you know, good for them. I'm like, I'm like that commenter that said in the last video, God help us all. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> like we are in for a ride with them too. So Ca Cassidy and Rob have a chat. And Cassidy's already saying, like, the conversations with Rob's are, Rob is just not necessarily what yeah. she's used to. It's, it's always a little bit off. Mm -hmm. So Rob tells her that she reminds him of a bee mm -hmm. because she doesn't stop moving. Rob is different than she's used to. She feels that he doesn't necessarily get when she's joking. Yeah. They talk about snakes, and she jokes that she's sitting next to one. She tells oh. tells him that he's a big cut. She's a big cuddler, but she didn't want to cuddle too much since it was the first night. And honestly, the chat ended abruptly because they they were pulling our straws, have, trying to find yeah. something to talk about. Like I think at one point she asked him, "What is his favorite snake?" And he said, "The next one." Yeah. And I was like, "You see, this weird type of aura thing fits Rob, and like it works to his benefit, yeah. right? Compared to Nigel, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even then, it's it's already." I can already tell Rob don't like this girl. Mm -hmm. He already let us know that, hey, Liv, if you would have shown me this, I would have like, liked this girl better than the girl that I showed her the first time. So, like, I get it. Mm -hmm. So, Aaron and Kayla talk. Aaron doesn't feel that he's good at talking about his feelings. Yeah. He holds back certain things. He really does like her. And there have been times where he's thought about things he's loved about her. And that's mm -hmm. even scared him. Well, Kayla tells him that she feels the same way, that she has love for him and she loves um, who he is as a person. Yeah. Aaron can see himself falling in love with her and she can too. Well, she tells him that she's not in a rush to settle down, to get married and have kids. But she's, you know, ready to go with the flow with him wherever that might take them. Mm. Um, I really have nothing to add to them. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a good natural progression yeah. of their relationship. Yeah. So, Kayla and Liv, uh, Kayla tells Liv about the chat with Aaron. Mm -hmm. Liv is super excited for her. She picks her up, spins her around, everything. Yeah. Rob and Aaron talk. Uh, Rob misses Andrea. He's mm -hmm. trying to push his feeling aside and see what's going to happen with Cassidy. Um, but he's now finding himself gravitating towards Liv some more. Mm. He thinks that he knows how she operates and he could probably handle her. Mm -hmm. Aaron tells Rob about his love thoughts about Kayla. Mm -hmm. The funny thing about it is Aaron actually described it perfectly to where y'all two hate each other. Mm -hmm. And then y'all kind of find it funny how much y'all hate each other. And next thing you know, y'all are together. Yeah. And I'm like. Oh, yeah. Even though 
even though I did not see the Rob and Liv thing coming, mm-hmm. it makes sense now. Yeah. It makes sense more now than it did when she first came in as a bombshell. Yeah. You know? So as they're getting ready, um, well, it's nighttime. Kayla mm-hmm. tells the girls that she's falling for Aaron. Okay. Serena likes Cordell, but feels that she's not showing it enough. And she's kind of scared to let him in. Serena, you keep giving off these excuses. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, you, Blair said it perfectly. It's, the ball's now in your court. For you to prove to him and show him that you're really that interested. you're interested, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying. So Cassidy and Leah talk. Cassidy says that Rob is different than she's used to. He's mm-hmm. not easy, and it's kind of like a hard nut to crack. But mm-hmm. she's enjoying the challenge. Mm-hmm. Leah still thinks Rob is a good person, and she wants the best for him. Mm-hmm. Cassidy think thanks Leah for being supportive and not letting it stop their friendship. She's over here telling Leah she's a queen, she's an angel, just singing her praises. Listen here, Leah. <laughs> I don't know where you and Cassidy had a private conversation where y'all set up the scene Mm -hmm. to where you're in the middle of the villa and basically you are basically putting on camera that you are supportive of Rob Mm -hmm. and that, oh yeah, you are a queen and like, you know, I gravitated towards you, you know what I mean? I trust you and all that stuff. Leah, good PR right here, okay? Good scene for you, okay? (laughs) Okay, what did you think about the Cassie and Leah uh, conversation? I thought it was a Leah production. Yes. So, <laughs> A plus for the Leah production. Listen here, I'm only joking. I'm only mm-hmm. showing my disdain for Leah. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Rob ends up pulling Liv for a conversation. Okay. And at this point, he's really trying to get to know Liv and just see how the conversation goes with her. Mm-hmm. Um, Liv tells him that she was actually going to choose him to be in a couple because she likes his vibe. Mm. And he tells her that he has been liking her. Mm. So, she would be into talking to him some more but she doesn't want to jump the gun just yet what are your thoughts on on that conversation with Liv and rob i thought it was actually good i mean when Liv first came in she was barely talking to the guy yeah. it seemed like she wanted him to prove that he was worth something to her yeah. like to kind of woo her in a way uh, but rob is not that guy but with them just being chill and comfortable and actually building some t- type of rapport yeah i think that's helping them get into this next phase which i think it could work hey listen here I, I said a lot of things throughout these reviews. Um, I said that uh, Liv carried herself as if she was a trophy wife, as if she wanted to be picked. Mm-hmm. And then I got to know Liv. And, and I kind of made it known that Liv is not, even though, like, you know, Leah and Nicole is higher on my list of people that I don't like, I did make it known that I, I'm not really a fan of Liv. Yeah. After these recent episodes, Liv is okay with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then y'all hear what I said? I said, "Liv's okay with me." Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, look. Same. <laughs> I think Rob and Liv would actually be. Truth be told, y'all probably gonna vote both of them out. To be honest, just be like, you know what, y'all can go. But but I, I wonder what would that do to shake up that girl core group right there. Mm. You get what I'm saying? If Rob and Liv actually like become a thing, because now. I could see in the beginning when Rob was first talking to her, she didn't really have much personality. But now it's like she's comfortable now. You have to see her in like real, like real time movement. Besides, like in the questionnaire type of way, you yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Kayla and Aaron talk. Kayla can see Aaron being her boyfriend, yeah. and he's telling her that's a good expectation to have. Mm-hmm. He can't see anybody coming in turning either one of their heads at this point. Yeah. But Aaron says, "Just don't be kissing people on challenges," and she oh. agrees that she will not. Oh man. <laughs> We will see. We will see. <laughs> so Nicole gets a text that it's time for everyone to gather around the fire pit. America has been voting. Those with the fewest votes. Well, well, they, uh, well, America's been voting. Okay. Listen here. <laughs> America been voting and they mm-hmm. said in no order. Yes. You know, we go see who are the best couples that are saved for tonight. Right. Yes. Now, listen, I give a request and I know y'all go come through for your boy. I said, give me Leah. As in, don't put her. She should not. Be, her name should not be called in in this thing. Right. You get what I'm saying. Rob' name should be called. Rob should be safe automatically. And we about to see who was safe. You ready? Right. So Leah and Miguel are saved. The first name that was called was <laughs> Leah Miguel. Y'all let me down. Janae and Kenny. Mm-hmm. Kayla and Aaron. Mm-hmm. Serena and Cordell. Mm-hmm. Nicole and Kendall. Now stop right here for a second. The fact that y'all voted for Serena and Cordell, right? I just want to point something out just in case people forgot because people like them as a couple. They say they're cute together. I do believe that Serena do like Cordell Beckham. I just want to point that last name out. Okay. That she do like Cordell 
Beckham. Mm-hmm. Okay, that the the little brother of Odell Beckham, NFL superstar, wide receiver of the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. He posted on his story to vote for them. Right. I think that Serena do like Cordell Beckham. Got okay, you. I we just got like... what you put in there. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so the vulnerable couples are Liv and Nigel, no, Rob and Cassidy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we find out that the fellow Islanders will decide who is going to stay by standing behind the person they want to save. The people with the least amount of people behind them will be dumped from the island. Man, this is the most brutal way of voting I've ever seen. And they seen. were called one by one oh my to goodness. stand behind. I was like, this is brutal. Yeah, we were holding hands. It was it was a scary time. Yes. <laughs> so behind Liv is all the girls, y'all. Okay. Serena, <laughs> Janae, Kayla, Nicole, <laughs> Leah, everybody. Mm-hmm. Behind Rob is everybody but Kenny. Shout out to Kenny okay, because okay, you came in with him. Okay. So we've got Cordell, Aaron, Kendall, and Miguel all behind Rob. So, who's going home? Cassidy and Nigel. But before they leave, Cassidy mm-hmm. pulls Leah for a chat. Yeah. And, she, and in a way, she's kind of confronting Leah. Yeah, yeah. And said that she had Leah's back and showed her loyalty. And it would have been nice just for at least one person to stand behind her. Mm. And Leah's like, look, girl, I'm wearing Liv's clothes right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we fought. We made up. Um, but I do apologize that you felt the way you felt. Hey, so. I wonder what is. Can I be a conspiracy for a minute? Hold on. Is this the end? That's the end of the episode. Can I be a little conspiracy for a minute? Sure. What is the loyalty you showed to her, uh, 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 Cassidy? I will say this. When Leah was talking trash about how Liv um, didn't have her back with the Rob situation, mm-hmm. Cassidy was around and beside her during all that time talking mm-hmm. about, you know, basically like, oh, why would Liv say that? And I'm on your side, Leah, and mm-hmm. all this type of stuff. But honestly, it wasn't nothing to write home about. See, look, that's not part of my conspiracy. <laughs> okay. My conspiracy, we can remember, this is not a pro-Rob show. This is an anti-Leah show. From this side, side of the, the table, table right? right? What loyalty are you talking about? Are uh, you talking about that scene that y'all orchestrated in the middle of the uh, show tonight? Ooh. Hmm? Like, 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 I had your back. What do you mean you had your back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, you wasn't here long enough to have anybody back, Cassie. Mm-hmm. So what back you talking about? The part where you were like, we going to talk about Rob. Mm-hmm. And you going to say, basically, like, you know, thank you for being supportive. Thank you for, you know, inviting me into the girl group. And then I'm going to say, you know, I really want the best for Rob because, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. But listen, here, I'm only being a conspiracist unless it's true. You get what I'm saying? I feel it in my bones that that's true. Man, see, I feel it somewhere. Yeah. Listen here, man. Don't let Blair fool y'all. Even though we was holding hands and I was holding her hand because I wanted to hold her hand, not because I was scared. <laughs> she was enjoying the voting process. She was over there, ha 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 ha. And okay. I was enjoying the whole process. <laughs> Listen here, Casa Amor is tomorrow. Yes. I have not seen a Casa Amor in action ever. Yeah. So um, I'm very excited to see what y'all think is going to happen. Tell me what to expect because I'm new to this, not true to this. Um, leave your comments, like, share subscribe to the show um and let us know about uh do you think rob and live is going to become an item by you know at some point in the show what is your final thoughts on the show if if you have anything uh final thoughts i mean hey we got the people up out of here we needed oh, to so goodness. good job cast the ogs well i guess they're not all ogs but i'm calling them the ogs the mm-hmm. ogs are going to cast i told you so <laughs> i told you she, she, let's go y'all she was enjoying it listen yeah. hey, y'all enjoy the rest of your night we see y'all tomorrow bye